comes into an assembly and see, I can't operate there because they pray. You know, I can't operate there because they got gatekeeper at the door. I can't operate there because they have watchmen on the wall. Amen. These people, these people know what they're about. Amen. You ever been to a church where you can just kind of sense by the way they, they lined up and the way they, they put the service together that they were folks that really knew it? Not just knowing how to run the service. Because a lot of religious folk know how to do that and they ain't got no power. Amen. No power whatsoever. But they can run a good church service. But I'm talking about being able to operate in the spirit and be able to see the needs for, of people, being able to guard the house of God, being able to stand, watch, and intercede for leaders. Amen. So that's really what this is about. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody want to read that for me? I almost want to read it, but hey. I know you probably can't see it. This is a study that I've done contrasting various warriors found in the Old Testament with their New Testament counterparts. In order to understand the context of this lesson, we must understand that God presents us with a multitude of types, shadows, and object lessons in the Old Testament that direct us to the reality of our life in Christ. Studying these Old Testament warriors helps us to understand our role as spiritual fighters in the kingdom of God as well as corporate warriors in the church of Christ. Amen. 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 So then that means that we, we understand that uh, Minister James has more than uh, just a, a, a music function, but his function is military. Mm -hmm. Amen. When he's on the keyboard, he's slaying demons. Mm -hmm. When he's on the keyboard, he's fighting spiritual warfare. There's a military function to what he does. And basically what we're saying here is that everything that God gave us in the Old Testament that we see material, there's a spiritual uh, lesson behind it. Amen. The Bible says that the Old Testament was our example. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's much in the Old Testament that uh, points toward how we're supposed to be living as Christians and, and especially points us to Christ and as people of God. Amen. So a, a, a lot of what we see as material, a lot of what we see as physical in the in the Old Testament is uh, spiritual in the New. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. First row, watchmen. What watchmen do? They, they stand watch over the people. They exhort. Amen. Sheila was uh, functioning in a watchman function. And, and you'll find that they overlap. Amen. It's not always that you're all of one. But then God may use you over here one minute, then he'll use you over here the next. Amen. Uh, encourage. Amen. Uh, Evangelist Sheila was exhorting. Encourage. Warn. Instruct. Care for the needs of the people. Sound like a pastor, right? Stand guard over leaders. Protect, defend, and intercede. Amen. And I believe I had... If somebody could get 2 Kings 11, 4 through 8, I'm not going to do all of the scriptures, but just maybe pull one or two out and show you how this thing worked in the Old Testament so that we can get a New Testament application for it. 2 Kings 11. I'm going to try to be as fast as I can going through here. I got it. 2 Kings 11, verse 4. In the seventh year, is that Yeah. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and guards and brought them into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. I made a vow to the Lord. Right? Amen. I made a vow to the Lord. And he showed them the king's son. So that basically kind of showed them that they had some responsibility. Amen. And he commanded them saying, this is the thing you shall do. A third part of you that enter in, enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. Watchmen watch over the house. All right. And a third 
part shall be at the gate of Sur, and a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house. Look what it says. That it be not broken down. Huh? How many broken down churches have you been in? Mm. Amen. They got some churches that, and we're not talking about physically. Physically, they look wonderful. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit, they're broken down. Mm -hmm. So if I'm feeling a watchman role, it's a very important thing because I'm watching over the entire house. I'm watching over the souls in the house. I'm watching over the spiritual activity in the house. And anything that tries to come in and invade, amen, and, 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 uh, I don't want to say um, what I want to say, and 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 undermine the stability of the house. I have to be on guard for. All right. So, what kind of roles in the New Testament church do um, watchmen uh, fill? Apostles watch over the house. Pastors definitely. They guard the sheep. Evangelists for sure, because evangelists cry aloud. They spare, They they tell what they saw. Right. <laughs> Teachers watch over the house by instructing. Y'all see where I'm going now? Mm -hmm. Intercessors who pray for the people. Amen. They're always on guard. Amen. And I told you I've been in churches where they've had intercessors all over the house. We need to have people specially, specifically positioned in this house to pray. Man, time out for just coming in and having church and going home. Amen. If we do that, all we'll ever do is have church and go home. But when some real warfare come up, we won't be able to stand. So we need people in position to pray. Amen. Maisha, what's another function you think that I don't have in here that will be a watchman? Prophet. Yeah. Something outside the fivefold ministry. Something that serves in the house. Ushers. Ushers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Ushers got to be watchmen. Amen. And I, I've seen, I don't know about you, but I've seen some lackadaisical ushers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks, they know how to do the position and put their finger up mm -hmm. and, and walk like this. Mm -hmm. Like they got a stick between their cheeks. No. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> they know how to do that, but they don't understand the spiritual function. That's right. And that's why you go to so many churches and the usher got liquor on the breath. Mm -hmm. You know, or they mean they don't know how to welcome people into the house. But they're walking over. It's a spiritual function. You know, you go to some church, you see folks all in the door, they just playing and everything. They're not paying attention. The one thing God wants us to get out of this is learn how to watch. The way I was taught when we were up here, and anybody's praying, amen, if you up here, you don't be like this. You supposed to be watching. That's what I was taught. If you're in the eldership position on that particular day, you need to be watching. Amen. When they taught us uh, ministerial ethics and everything, don't sit in the pulpit and be adjusting your clothes and you know how people, you know, drinking water. They, they, you know, but who's watching over the sheep? Amen. The reason this this platform is raised is not so much because the people up here are better. Amen. But if David sits on top of the hill, he can see the sheep better. Huh? He can see which one's got a wound that's festering with flies. He can see which one has a broken leg. And I believe that, and, and, and Deaconess, I'm sure you can tell, you haven't been up here much, but you've been up here enough, that if you sit up here long enough, God will show you stuff. He'll show you people's needs. You know, Sister Sally don't look too good today. You know, she's smiling, but, you know, her husband smacked her last night. You know, Brother James is depressed. Not this James. But, you know, God will show you things from up here so that you can pray for the needs of the people. You don't have to say, you don't have to say nothing. Just be on guard. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Two, gatekeepers. I was really trying to hash out the difference between gatekeepers and watchmen. And, you know, I was looking at some scripture where it, it, look, it, it looks to me as if the, the, the watchman is the one who's watching, he's watching out. All right? No, no, no. The gatekeeper is the one who watches out. All right? The watchman is watching what's over on over the inside. Remember in Ezekiel where um, God says, I put watchmen over the people? 
And if they don't warn the people, the blood is on the watchman's hands. Now, we take that particular passage of scripture and we apply it to the folks out there. But he wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking about Israel. Amen. So Ezekiel, as a watchman, his responsibility was toward God's people, not the ones on the outside. Amen. And he was to warn them. So the watchman is actually watching over what's inside the house. The gatekeeper is actually looking for a threat from outside. Is that all right? Where was it? Let, let me see. What I want. I'll try Exodus 32 and 26 just to see what it gives us. I actually went over these at work, but I, you know, I was trying to work and do this at the same time. Is this all right? Amen. Exodus 32, 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Now that's, isn't that something? He had to, they had to kill their own folks. Hmm? And sometimes as a gatekeeper, remember you guard the house. Amen? So you need to be able to see when God is operating in Apostle Jackson and when the devil is operating in Apostle Jackson and be able to kill that devil. Sometimes by prayer. Sometimes you have to walk up to some folks and say, look, we don't do that at Jihad. That's why you have to know the vision of your church. You have to know the culture of your church. You have to know what's, what your leader's heart is. Because somebody will come up here and want to, you know, uh, the Lord put on my heart to bring some snakes. And we know that the Bible says that uh, they shall, um, they shall, uh, what did it say about snakes? If they, I brought some poison and some snakes. And the Bible says that if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. That they shall pick up serpents and they shall, and we're going to have a snake, a snake poison service. And watch, we're going to drink the poison and watch the Lord. And we had to say, no, 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 no. We love you, prophet, but don't you bring that stuff in here. Because people will do crazy stuff. And you have to be, you have to be able to guard your house. Am I saying something? Amen. Just because the girl at the door is cute don't mean she won't punch you out. We'll punch my out, won't you? Hey, I know she will. <laughs> we got a watchman in the house. Amen. Amen. New Testament equivalents of watchmen. And, and I challenge you, read these scriptures. And, and, and I guarantee you get more out of these than I did. Amen. Um, intercessors, prayer warriors, prophets, definitely. Evangelists, armor bearers. Armor bearers are gatekeepers. Amen. Because they, 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 they alert the watchmen of imminent threats. Amen? Uh, helps ministries, definitely. Hospitality folks. Ushers. Uh, even the folk that clean. Amen? Can be classified as watchmen and gatekeepers. Amen? I used to go to my church on Saturday since I didn't have no wife and I had no life and I didn't have nothing else to do. I would go to the church and I would turn on worship music and I would clean and I would worship. And I would worship and I would clean and they would come in on Sunday and church be like, bam! And they don't even know why. Mm -hmm. We ought to have people who will come in, amen, and, and actually, this is, see, this is, I'm not law about or anything, but you'll notice that even when Cheryl comes in, she don't talk to nobody. Not before service. And it's not that she don't love you because I've been in ministries before, you know, like social churches. Mm -hmm. They want to, oh, child, where you get them shoes at? Mm -hmm. You know, we getting ready to go into worship. Child, I got my hair done at Benny's. Benny, Benny just did my hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I get that number. You know, listen, man, we getting ready to do ministry. We don't need that. And it's not to say that we don't fellowship. 
But if we're watching over the house, amen, the gatekeepers and the watchmen role is the most important before service. Before service. Because somebody should be in here preparing the house. That's why we got to have the music playing. Amen. That's why we got to bring our spirits in. That's why we got to have somebody, somebody walk up the aisle and pray to prepare the ground for the coming of the Lord. Am I saying something? Helps ministries are part of that. Amen. So we got to be mindful of that. That's why we don't, we don't, we don't have uh, anybody just come in and get on the drums. If there's one thing I can't stand, don't never let me be a pastor because they, they just won't like me. I mean, don't come in, you know, right before service. No! You know, I got the feeling, baby. Ow! Look at him. No. I bind the spirit of James Brown in the name of Jesus. Oh, boy, I think I heard something. Now, amen. We going through this pretty good. I'm going to do this again for all the leaders. Breakers. This is my favorite one. Amen. Ah, Micah 21, 2, verse 13. Micah 2, verse 13. And one of the things that you'll find about all four of these is that they're all manifestations of Jesus. Amen. He does all of this. Amen. He does it individually in our lives. He watches over us. Amen. He guards our hearts. Amen. He, 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 he break. Them. Yeah, somebody else get um, Isaiah 61 and 1. Breakers tear down strongholds. They break through walls and barriers so that God's people may pass through. They set atmospheres. Amen. I.e. worship. Preparation for the preached word. That's why we always try to have some music before the word is preached. To prepare the people's hearts for the word of God. Is that alright? They break up and soften hard areas. Sometimes there's some hard stuff going on. Somebody had a hard week. Amen. Somebody's mad because they had an argument with their wife when they on the way to church. You know, and, and you know how some services, you know how we sometimes we start out here like there's something pushing against us. Y'all ain't have no church in here. You know, we that's why we can't be passive. We got to understand that we can break. We have power over that. We don't have to allow the devil to come in here and dictate how we're going to operate on any given Sunday or even on Thursday night. Tonight was a little bit hard. That's why we had to push through. Amen. Until things got a little smoother. Open the hearts of the people. Call down the glory of God. Invoke the spirits of worship, healing, etc. Who has Micah 2 and 13? I do. It uh -huh. says, the one who breaks open will come up before them. Uh -huh. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. Their king will pass before them. Who that sound like? Huh? But John said, make way for the coming of, make his path straight. The king can't come on a bumpy road. Huh? The king, they, you can't not construct or not smooth the road and expect the king to come over the road. Amen? So there's something that we have to do. We got to do more than, come on in, Lord. Come on in, Lord. If we're not ready to receive him, he ain't coming. Because that's just religious noise. Where's your heart? Huh? We got to all be on one accord. Amen. What is the one part of the service where you see the breaker function most prominent? Think about it. The first one. That first devotional service. That's what it's for. It's not just really, I know you go to some churches and alright, we're going to have Deacon Jackson come up and run the devotional service and ah, uh -huh, oh Lord, you know, I mean yeah. <laughs> That's not making fun of other people's practices but even when they do that there's a purpose. Amen? And if you partake of it you break through. Even a 
Sunday they sing it. With my ransomed soul shall fail. Rest. But you get, get into it. In the cross, what they're doing is they're preparing the way for the Lord to come in. It says the one who breaks through. Now, my King James says the breaker. Amen. So it's not us that's doing it. But what we're doing when we do our devotional service is we're inviting Jesus. We're making room for him. Amen. We're making a way for him. Is that all right? Amen. I, I love that breaker thing because it, it, it's effective when, when, when it's time to preach. You need the breaker anointed operating. Amen. And see what happens is people get healed. Huh? People get saved. People get delivered. Why? Because Isaiah 61 and 1 says what? He came to do what? Where in Isaiah 61 and 1? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me uh -huh. to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, uh -huh. and the opening of the prison to the Opening of prison bound. doors. What else? To them that are bound. Opening the prison doors to them that are bound. Amen. That's the breaker anointing. Amen. To break me out of the prison of sickness. To break me out of the chains of depression. To break me out of, you know, whatever it is. Amen. So you got to know where you are. You got to know why. Why am I up here singing? You know, I see too many people. Okay, we're going to have the praise and worship team come. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Especially that head laid to the side thing. <laughs> we are in your prayer. You know, it looks like, oh, I wish we could hurry up and get this over. So I can sit back down. You know, we don't need that. Huh? Because somebody may have cancer. And if you sing that, that's why when I try to do whatever it is I try to do, and even, I don't care if I do sound bad half the time. I try to knock out, I, I have my toes curled all up in my shoes, man. I try to knock it out of the park because God wants the best. He wants the best because he can't work with me. You know what I'm saying? He can do it himself. But have you noticed that um, ever since God made man and put him on earth and, and he looked down on all he saw and it was good? Mm -hmm. After that, you never saw him create anything without using a person. Mm -hmm. Because we're workers together with him. And the Bible says, Now in him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to what? The power that works in him. No, the power that works in him. Yeah. You sure? No, wait a minute. According to the what power that worketh where? In me. In me. Amen. And the power's only going to work in me to the extent that I allow it to. Amen. Huh? Amen. So he's not going to pick you up, you passive, and, 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 and do you like a puppet on a string. You got to cooperate. And this can happen every Sunday. I'm talking about devotional service so powerful. Y'all remember Mother Got Up? I didn't know I was going to... All I knew is somehow or another I was supposed to sing when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David Jack. I had never sung that song in public or ever in my life. I would never sung it in my life. That's why I said, don't be afraid to try stuff. And sung that song, and, and Gino out here talking about, I will dance. And this woman gets up out of the wheelchair. Amen. And it ain't got nothing to do with me. Except for the fact that even when you don't even know what it is he's going to do, some of us are waiting for God to tell us what he's going to do. Oh, then I'll go then. But he didn't tell Abraham nothing. He just said go. And he went. And because he went, here we are today. Amen? Am I saying something? Last one up through. Y'all go home. Go ahead. Repairs of the breach. A breach is a hole. A breach is a broken place. Uh -huh. A breach is where something's getting in that shouldn't be getting in. Something's getting out that ought not to be getting out. 
A am I saying something? Amen. We lose spiritual power through breaches. And sometimes the breach is that preacher who won't talk to the other preacher because he stole one of his members. Huh? Sometimes the breach is between those two pastors that won't fellowship because they're afraid somebody's going to have more than somebody else. There's more breaches in Rochester. Am I? Ooh, am I? Huh? What do repairs of the breach do? They repair holes or divisions. Amen. That's why when I was in Church of God in Christ, if we had, if you had an order against somebody, they didn't just let it go. Me and Gino, man, look, look, me and Gino, we just can't. We just can't. Mm. No, no, brother, you got to go get it right. Yeah. That's right. Get it right. Huh? Yeah. Because do you understand that all this stuff about, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he's over there and I'm over here and guess who's in the middle? Mm -hmm. Huh? So the breach has to be repaired. Bre repairs of the breach, they fix holes in the walls of the kingdom. They establish defenses, defensive perimeters. Okay, so they're kind of like gatekeepers and watchmen. Mm -hmm. What's a defensive perimeter? A defensive perimeter, when we were in the army, when we set up our base camp or whatever, you had soldiers facing outward all the way around 360 degrees with their weapons pointed that way. Mm -hmm. So any direction that the enemy came from, we were able to spot him and cut him off. We got to be able to do the same thing in church. Amen. We have to guard the things of God. Everybody can't just come up here and play. Everybody just can't come up here and get on the organ. Amen. Everybody just can't come in and grab a mic. Amen. Repairs and breach, they, they repair broken relationships. You ever know some people that, you know, they'll make you get it together. You know? Or, or you always hear the same type of talk from them. You know, well, baby, maybe she just was having a bad day. You ought to go talk to her. Some people have an anointing to bring people together. You also have um, um, bridge builders. I, I believe I'm a bridge builder. Because I'll introduce somebody to somebody in a minute. And a lot of times what, what would happen is I would introduce this pastor, my friend, to this pastor, my friend, and they get together and get crazy about each other and forget about me. <laughs> and, you know, and I'd be left out. And, and they going on, and he invited him to his church to preach. He invited him to his church to preach. And now they just, ah, you know, but it's all right. Because you just established a relationship. Amen. Apostles do that all the time. The reason I'm here is because somebody brought me here. Amen. I would have never known nothing about y'all. Apostle Muzan was talking about y'all and talking about Pastor Man. Oh, Pastor Man, Pastor Man, Pastor Man, Pastor Man, Pastor Man. You know, so finally I had to go see who Pastor Winner was. And now whenever I talk to him, he still be telling the same story. You know, when I first saw y'all, I knew that I knew there was a connection. I'd be like, I'm not tired of hearing that. But you know, it blesses his heart to tell yeah, that story. Yeah. But there was a repairer of the breach involved. Yeah. Uh, somebody who brings folks together. Yeah. Amen. And you can't be insecure and be a repairer of the breach. That's right. Amen. Because if I hook her up with him, then, you know, that's going to mess up. You ever, you ever have people, and, and let me just say this. Don't let nobody destroy your standing with somebody else That's right. because what they think of somebody. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling y'all this earlier on as, as up and coming preachers because there's a lot of that going, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. <clears throat> Pastor Robinson. Yeah, just want to let you know, man, this, this Jackson fella, don't fool with him. Don't let him preach in your church. He ain't no good. In 2005, he did this. And in 2002, he did. And it, yeah, Doc. Amen. I thank you. That is godly advice. Amen. And we spiritualize it. Don't, don't let people do that. Don't, if, if you like somebody or you love somebody or you appreciate somebody's ministry, then you let that person know, well, you know what? That's all well and good, but he's my friend. Yeah, that's right. Right. Amen. That, that's yeah. all right. But she, you know, she's always welcome at my church. Amen. 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 There, and I'm going to tell you this story. This is a true story. There was a preacher. Um, uh, a preacher said, well, 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 Pastor Win Apostle Winter said he had a preacher on the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the preacher said something about me. And he said to the preacher, well, I don't know, but I'm going to keep him close to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hey. There you go. Uh -huh. you the phone See, yeah. don't, don't kill don't yeah. kill nobody's influence. Amen. And don't let nobody kill a person's influence. Especially That's if it's right. somebody you like, you love. That's you right. know, keep on feeling the way you feel about that person. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, and don't let nobody come to you with something from way back about somebody. Yeah. You know, if if, if, if Sheila's going on in the Lord and, and she come to my church, I'm not gonna entertain no phone call. That's right. Well, let me tell you something about her. You know, listen, whatever it was, it's under the blood of Jesus. It ain't none of my business. Amen. 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 But people want to kill your influence they will. because they don't want, you know, because they got an order to get somebody yeah. and they don't want to see that person go on in life. Amen. Allow people to move on. Amen. 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 Um, what did I have here? Repairs of the, they rebuild that which has been broken down. Amen. Nehemiah was good for that, wasn't he? Nehemiah 6 and 1. Let's mess with him. And somebody else get Matthew 5 and 9. And let's see what Jesus says about the repairs of the breach. Somebody else get Isaiah 58 and 2 and we're going to run it on in. I knew this class could be taught pretty quick. So we got uh, Nehemiah 6 and 1. Isaiah 58 and 12. And Matthew 5 and 9. This is an important ministry. Yeah. Apostles do it. Pastors are supposed to do it. Evangelists definitely. Intercessions. All health ministries. Mm -hmm. Amen. I remember one time. I, I don't know if I told you. Did I tell you all about the Subway sandwich? Mm -hmm. um, there was, there's a pastor in Buffalo. Uh, what's his name? Pridgen. His name is Darius Pridgen. And his church is so big. He got a, he got a school connected to his church. Mm -hmm. Big old gym. Got a, got, a, got a subway. You know, subway the salmon. Mm -hmm. Got a subway in his church. Mm -hmm. So I, God bless him. You know, I, I guess he wanted to show my brother, you know, he had a subway. And me and my brother were there. And this was years ago, so I was functioning as my brother's armor bearer. Mm -hmm. Right? And um, <laughs> he, he was walking us around the church, showing us around and stuff. So we got to the subway, and this joker gonna buy my brother a sandwich. <laughs> And act like I wasn't even there, you know? I mean, my brother got this big old sandwich, man, yeah. and he took it home and he ate it, and he didn't give me nothing. Wow. <laughs> Don't do people like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I said his name. Hey, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He says, looking at the camera. Um, so, you know, they ain't going to invite me over anyway, so what the heck. <laughs> but, you know, don't be uncivilized. Learn how to treat folk. It's an awesome experience when you go to a church where they know how to treat people. Amen. And this is for all, all helps ministries. Amen. Don't, don't, don't be the kind of usher, you know, sit down over there. Amen. Don't do people like that. Amen. Amen. You know, God bless you, God bless you, I ain't speaking to you. You know, Amen. don't do people like that. Amen. But a lot, all of this is about human relationships. Amen. About spiritual, it's about relationships. Not just running church but relationships. Why? Because our God is a relational God. And the one thing we have to understand about um, apostolic ministry is that it's designed to bring the relation, the relational aspect back to church. That you don't do what I say do just because I'm the bishop. But no, you know, Jesus didn't, you ever notice Jesus didn't come on the scene giving folks orders? Yeah, the only order he gave was follow me. And once they began to follow him, he showed them how much he loved them right. to the extent that when he was gone, they were ready to do what he had put them in. They were ready to run throughout the earth acting like him. Yeah. Follow me as I follow Christ, doggone it. You don't know. No. Huh? You got to provide some kind of example. Yeah. Amen. Who has, uh, what was the one scripture? Nehemiah 6 and 1. Who's got Nehemiah 6 and 1? Now it came to pass when son bowed blood and told by uh, uh -huh. and Geshem and Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built 
the wall mm -hmm. and that there was no breach left therein. Wow. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the mm -hmm. gate. What happened? Oh, keep going. Yeah, just that Sam Bala and Geshem sent unto me saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono, but they thought to me but they thought to do me mis Wow. Mm -hmm. He gets the wall built up. Mm -hmm. You notice he said I repaired the breaches. Mm -hmm. The devil got mad. Uh, he always get mad. If you want to shame the devil, the one thing that'll do that makes him really mad says, I just want you to know, I'm sorry about what I said about you. Amen. I know it's been three years since we spoke, but amen. You please forgive me for acting like such a fool. Can we just pray and ask him? Ooh, he hate that. He hate that. He hate that. Yeah, I wouldn't say nothing to her. Well, she the one did you first. Well, anybody ought to come to anybody and ask for forgiveness. It ought to be her. Mm -hmm. He can't stand it when folks get together. Huh? Do you understand that a good, uh, I would say 80% of the relationships in the body of Christ that are broken, or when you have a, uh, uh, when you have a situation where folks just get, seem like they just got hell going on between each other. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, it's because the devil knows if them two hook up, mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Huh? My last pastor when I was in Germany, me and him was fine. You know, just kind of like a sometimey thing going on. Me and him were fine as long as it was me and him. And then when he got around the folks and all of that, he got funny, seemed like. You know, and, and I just got tired of it. You know, we had this military bus. We used to get the military buses and we would drive them, you know, and go on trips and, and, and go to other churches and whatnot. So after we had dropped all the people off, he had to take the bus back anyway, so I said, I'm going to ride with him. And finally I said, you know, Mr. Moore, the devil don't want me and you to be friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and we got to work in that out. Come to find out, he was the next pastor. I ended up being his armor bearer. Mm -hmm. God had a purpose. Yeah. Right. Amen. But the devil did not want us to be friends. Mm -hmm. Amen. He don't want, he does not like it when people get together. No, exactly. Amen. Who's got Isaiah 58 and 12? I got it. Mm-hmm. Those among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up, raise up the foundations of many generations. Mm -hmm. And you shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer the of restore. streets to dwell in. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Huh? God wants to use us to restore some things that are broken down. Amen. And if anything, this society is so broken down. Morally is broken down. People are coming in church is broken down. Amen. Remember you told me, you know, on the way here, you told me about a broken down man. Amen. They brought him to church, and because he was drunk and smelly, they laughed at him. Huh? There's no repair of the breach. And usually when you find groups of people like that, that they'll laugh at somebody coming in from the outside, look among them and see how many breaches they got. They can't get along with each other. That's why they can't restore nobody else. Am I saying something? Who's got Matthew 5 and 9? What does Jesus say about the repairs of the breach? Uh, Matthew 5 and 9? Yeah. It says, uh, blessed are the peacemakers, uh -huh. for they shall be called the children. Ooh, blessed are the peacemakers. So all these other folk, I'm saved, but I still knock you out. <laughs> That's not what Jesus said. Huh? He said the ones that make peace. Huh? And sometimes to make peace, you do have to make some war. Right? Sometimes to make peace, you got to stand and you got to be stubborn. But he said, they shall be called the children of God. Repairs of the breach, our apostles, pastors, evangelists, intercessors, Helps ministries. So these are the four types that I found. If there's some more, somebody dig them out. But amen, you know, I hope that this particular uh, block of instruction or, or set of principles will help us, you know, as we grow as, 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 as a congregation, as individuals, you know, how must I function when I come in? And, and really ask God. 
Prepare your heart for the presence of God on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Begin to, you know, I'm, I'm getting back to where I was when I first got saved. At 6 o'clock on Saturday night, Batman had to get turned off. Mm -hmm. Amen. Star Trek got turned off. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it was time to get ready for whatever God is going to do on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And I want you to seriously, seriously begin to consider, God, how can you use me? When we come together, how can you use Give me a prophetic word to bless somebody. You know, we shouldn't be up here. Anybody got anything?